Hello and welcome back to Raw 1251 AM's coverage of the Warwick SU spring elections. We are here with Sophie Clark, um, a candidate for the Democracy and Development Officer role, uh, looking to become or we'll take that role for um, the next academic year. So Sophie, just to get uh, started off with, what are your key manifest manifesto pledges um, for the role? So my manifesto is quite simple, really. Um, I believe we need to uplift student power by um, having SU can having um, elected officers um, give handbooks out to freshers in first week about the SU's of democratic processes and decision making structures. Um, I believe that we should embed student campaigns in the five year strategic plan that's going to come up in the next year um, and make decolonization the heart of um, the work that's done in the educational institutions at this university. Um, and to review the powers given to officers and embolden the issue to prioritise students' interest over union management. Um, I yep. believe that we need to focus on climate justice, as previously outlined, and that in the, in the current cost of living crisis, um, we need to politicise the issue. Um, we need to turn it from a body that is seeking to reduce prices for students um, by reducing just um, like pint costs and, and routes, but we also need to see it as a as a method by which we can, as students, pressure the university um, to increase hardship funds and lower rent. Yeah, and with declining turnout and declining engagement in recent SU elections and all student votes, um, how would you make SU democracy more accessible, inclusive and engaging? So as, as previously outlined, I, I think that the first time most students really hear about the issue is actually this week. So like the end of by the end of by the end of term two, the first time they're hearing about it, they're asking to vote for the people who will be in charge. I think that in the first week of term, um, SU officers should be mandated by the issue to go around wall touring every single every single campus like uh, accommodation block and go give like talks to students if they'd want to, um, so that they can outline very clearly how the decision making structures work and also how they can use the SU to channel their own needs and desires. Um, I think especially around the cost of living crisis coming up to next winter, it will be key to get the SU's um, position in relation to the university sorted by the time of, of winter because people are going to, you know, can't really be affording food. So, yeah. And as a sabbatical officer leading on sustainability, how would you look to achieve Net, net zero on campus? Um, I think with net zero on campus, I would work with the existing um, sustainability groups, um, so such as the allotment and our, um, our sustainability um, champion, to see how things like food production and, um, sorry, I just walked out the page, um, how, how food production and electricity and all the vehicles around campus can be made um, like carbon neutral in the most just way possible. Um, so that means trying to move away from relying on rare earth minerals, which require continuing the process of extraction that's being required to do fossil fuels in the first place. Um, and I think that this approach has to come um, through embedding it in the SU's five-year plan so that it's not just the SU making decisions on how decommunization happens, but that students can as well. And I think a key, a key demand that students have raised on this issue is 50% um, um, vegan meals because at the moment um, the agriculture industry is the second highest carbon emitter. Um, so if we can do what we can to go meat free, then we should. Yeah, and with rising living costs a major concern for students, how would you seek to keep costs low in SU outlets and seek to also encourage the university to keep costs low in outlets run by them as well? Um, I, I, I believe that if you keep costs lower in SU outlets, then like where, where we can, um, then more people will come and we can hopefully keep keep profits um, in, the, in the positive but I don't personally have the numbers at the moment so I don't know how it would logistically happen um, but I believe things like um, equal pay across the board for um, all, all staff at the SU can mean that there's possibly avenues opened up where people are getting paid more than they could not be. Um, I, I also think that the main cost that students get at the moment is, is um, rent um, over the last four years, most accommodation blocks have gone over more than 10, 15% in rent costs. Um, that doesn't just need to be frozen for next year, it needs to come down. And the only way that's going to happen is by a, like a powerful campaign like led by students and not just the SU. Um, but I can imagine that the SU will be key in negotiations with the SU, um, but sorry, with, with unit management to make those rent costs lower. Um, because, I mean, if, if we're looking at like reducing drink prices, um, you know, 
10 15 pound a week off your rent is going to mean you can get three more drinks if that's like if this sort of math you're doing you can do that um yeah and um as ddo you will sit on the uh, with the su president on the university council how would you ensure that student interest is, interests are communicated and represented or represented at the at this higher level so I, I think on this level, we already have a, a wonderful um, democratic process structure to put um, students' interest through the SU, through petitions and through um, ASV motions. And I think that I would try and work more closely with those who are proposing these motions when they've passed um, to bring directly what they'd, how they'd want to see it enacted to um, unit management. I don't really see my role as like shaping uh, what, what, what campaigns are there, but more talking to those who, who are wanting to run campaigns and seeing how the SU can most effectively do that. And I think a big part of that is for, um, especially for things like climate and the cost of living, that we should be forming big student assemblies where um, we can get hundreds of students in the same room together talking about what practical solutions they think they can do on campus. So you can have both students um, find find ways they can help each other um, through these times, but also um, find find ways that they would like their university to be seen because ultimately um, it's an institution that needs to serve us more than it does corporate interest. Yeah. And a new development this year has obviously been the new SU voting bylaws that have come in. How would you work with clubs and societies to help implement these new bylaws? Um, I, I think I would, I mean, first of all, this is this is mostly the, the, the remit of the SOX officer. and I'd, I'd like to see how, how they'd like to go about it. Um, but I think, I think the main thing is, is to get in there early. Um, so what we've done now is we've, we've required to try and have all um, like voting results for elections in by the end of the year. And I think I'd want to try and have another look at how those things go, because at the moment I'm on exec for three in the societies and lots of our time is spent trying to work out how the roles work and how we can get a democratic system in place rather than focusing on the actual work the society is doing. And I think we need to be a bit more flexible with um, our SU societies because um, we have a very diverse like range of like class, racial and gender differences on campus. And I think the storms of structure that students choose to um, formulate their their cultural societies etc um, need to reflect that um, rather than just having this like one system for everything um, but I think in terms of um, educating people we should identify one role um, within each exec who who is like in charge of doing that or who is already in charge of doing that and that we should have earlier conversations with them to make sure they are aware of what they need to prepare on their end um, and how they can make it easier for themselves rather than rushing at the last minute and sort of wasting a whole weeks of lecture time and education. Yeah, and well, one final question. What makes you stand out from other candidates looking to become the democracy and development officer? Uh, I think what makes you stand out is is my commitment to um, like student organising and the, the work of um, like youth organising in general. I've been an active campaigner for over four years now, um, working from the environmental movement to racial justice movements. And I think that um, that connection to grassroots campaigning and community organising means that I have a, a sort of slightly different perspective than most SU officers would do on, on the issues. I've talked to SU officers from around the country and lots of them see their work as kind of um, as instrumental, right? They are they're merely there to talk to the right person in the SU to get the right thing done. Um, whereas I, I think that my role can help shift um, the political identity of, of the SU, um, turning it into a body that is trying to advocate for students. And as someone who, who, who's been advocating for these issues for the last my last three years on campus, um, I don't see anyone who, who, who could practically do that job um, better than me. Yeah, and that has been all our questions. Thank you to Sophie for agreeing to the interview and make sure to check out um, all the other candidates as you decide who will become your, uh, who will be part of your next SU for the next academic year. Great. Cool. And then, yeah.